So you want to learn SEMrush but don't have all day to sit through hours of content that could easily be distilled into just 10 minutes? Are you learning SEO, building an affiliate website, trying to rank on Google or just interested in one of the best researching market tools out there? We'll take you from beginner to comfortably competent where you'll know enough to be able to run a successful affiliate site just as we did or manage the SEO for a small business or any number of SEO related tasks and we'll do it in just under 10 minutes. Before we begin, I'm going to assume that you know what SEMrush is and roughly what it can do, so we won't go over the absolute basics of SEO researching. I'll take you through SEMrush itself. Okay, let's go. First, you need an account. We strongly recommend you get at least a free trial, link in the description, otherwise you'll be limited to a few searches a day. But this is what you'll see when you first open it. On the left, there are several sections for the different tools available. We'll be sticking to the SEO tools as they'll be the ones you'll probably be using the most. These are the SEMrush bread and butter. Here you have a domain and traffic related tools. Lots of very powerful keyword tools, backlinking tools and on-page SEO tools. We'll start with the keywords as this is where I think SEMrush is best used. We'll be using this as our keyword that we want to research, best chainsaw. Here you are given the search results in all their glory. You can change the country, platform and date up here. Obviously if you're trying to target mobile users in the UK you'd want the results to show that specific data. Very useful. There's the volume in your selected country. This is the number of searches over the last month. The global volume which is the total volume and volume in the highest searching countries. Then the keyword difficulty which is a decent estimate of how easy it will be to rank in the top 10 results on Google. 65 is ok, it wouldn't be the easiest to rank for, especially for a small site. These are the two most important, in our opinion, metrics on the entire page. A nice low difficulty with a decent to high volume means you found a good keyword, perfect, to make content on. Next, you have the intent. The trend over the last 12 months how many results appear in Google. Generally, it's easier to rank for a keyword if there are fewer results. And the SERP features, as in if any of these exist for the keyword. Then the cost per click and a competition score with the product listing ads and the top ads. Here the competition score is probably the most important for us as it's showing that there are a lot of advertisers in this space. Ideally, we'd want a score of roughly less than 0.6 but this doesn't seem to be as impactful as the volume or keyword difficulty score. The rest of this part is probably more important if you're looking at pay per click advertising but still useful content to learn about the keyword. Then underneath you have the keyword variations SEMrush has found which is great for finding new keywords. A question section which is great for finding questions related to your keyword that people are searching for and a general related keyword section. Again, great for finding new keywords to target or just to include in your content. Underneath that you have the actual search engine results page with some nice metrics to learn about your competition. Here you want the competition's authority score to be nice and low so you have a higher chance of ranking. And finally, right at the bottom, some more paid ad content that we'll ignore for now. But most of this so far is fairly self-explanatory. You want to know how to use it effectively. Well, that's what we'll get onto now by clicking view all keywords under the keywords variation section. This takes us to the keyword magic tool. As you can see, we have a lot of information here. Most of the information is the same as when you click on an individual keyword, such as the last page we are on. But here, you have lots of nice filters that are incredibly useful. One of my favourite things to do is to set the volume to be 1000 or more and the keyword difficulty to be no higher than 40. This immediately condenses down the results to give you some very rankable keywords for you to focus your content on. Here we have 8 keywords that we could probably generate 3 or 4 posts on. For example, we have best chainsaw sharpener. If you click on this little drop down you get a nice pop up of all the information you need about that keyword. Now best chainsaw sharpener could work very nicely with best chainsaw chain. Both of these have a decent volume and the keyword difficulties are 39 and 30 which should be attainable if you manage to create a well optimised post with valuable content. But not only that you have best mini chainsaw and best small chainsaw. Two keywords that have great metrics and work together nicely. Another possibility for a winning post. Then finally, 
You have best battery chainsaw and best battery power chainsaw, both with very good metrics that could have posts built around them. So with just a few clicks, you have the basis for four posts that, if created optimally, should perform really quite well. What we'd like to do then is to select all the keywords we want to use to build content from and send them off to the keyword manager. We're going to create a list called chainsaws and boom, that's them sent over. Now in the keyword manager, we have a list of the keywords here that we can keep adding to when finding more. So now you have an idea of what you can do in a couple of minutes. I'll show you another keyword research technique that we love to use that focuses on our competition. Now, I have already Googled some chainsaw related phrases and found a nice affiliate site called Chainsaw Larry, a site about chainsaws with around 70 posts. So thanks to Chainsaw Larry for being our subject today. Now what we can do here is head back to SEMrush, go to the domain overview section and put the domain chainsawlarry.com into the search bar. Here we get all sorts of fantastic information. We get a general authority score, how much traffic they are receiving, their backlink numbers. You also have the countries the traffic is coming from. A look at the SERP features they are hitting. For example here, they are doing well with image packs. Then graphs of their traffic and the distribution of keywords. Then under that we have their top keywords, the distribution and intent. Then their main competitors and a nice section of backlinks. But we'll be looking at their top organic keywords, the keywords they are ranking for in Google. So if we click on more details, we then get taken to the organic research page. This takes the entire website and condenses it down into keywords that we can apply the same filters to. Suddenly, we've got a huge amount of keywords to work from. What I especially like about this page is that it's so easy to quickly glance at the data for each keyword. You have the intent, the SERP features, the position they're ranking for in Google, and, of course, the volume and difficulty. So now, with the filters again, we'll do something very similar. Let's set the volume to be 720 or more. We'll set the keyword difficulty to be 40 or less, but this time we want only informational posts because we're thinking of using this as a way to create content people will backlink to. So we set the intent to informational, and look at that. Straight away, we've got 73 potential keywords to use. If we look at the top one, we have full chisel versus semi chisel. A classic informational keyword that would make a brilliant comparison post on a website. Now I think the chisel type is to do with a chainsaw chains, so let's look at other similar keywords on the list. See if we can get some chainsaw to make an informational page full of great keywords. So we've got chainsaw blade direction and chainsaw chain direction and here we have how tight should a chainsaw chain be? How to measure chain uh, what else? How to tighten chainsaw chain, and a few others. So now, from all of those, we've probably got a pretty great post that we could call Everything You Need to Know About Chainsaw Chains or something like that, and each subheading could be one of these keywords. I'm going to send those to another list in our keyword manager, so we have a list of keywords ready for our informational post. But then, if you want an idea of the content that is already out there, just click on the corresponding URL for each keyword and see the type of content you need to be better than. So for full chisel versus semi chisel, we see this page, chainsaw chain types explained, which has around 1200 words, not many pictures and just a few links. So straight away, I'm thinking we could do a better post than this. We just add more information, add more pictures to demonstrate the type of chains we're talking about. That brings the value of our post up higher than this one. Then we can link to more of our content and link out to other useful content. Then add a few more on-page SEO additions and I bet we could rank highly for this. You could even turn it into an infographic and use it as an outreach tool to try and get some backlinks. So much potential from just a few minutes of research on SEMrush, it really is that powerful. 
We used these techniques to build a website that earned over $150,000 in less than two years, mostly in our spare time. And with what we just discussed, you probably now know enough to be able to do that same level of research we did to create that website. We also used the backlink tools that SEMrush offers, and there are a lot of new tools that SEMrush have released, so if this video goes well and people want more, we could definitely put together another video, or go into more detail with other examples. If you want to know more about the website that made $150,000, we made a video discussing exactly what we did to create it, and you can watch that by clicking this link.